We're on the top of 4.2 notes. So you got those out first. Because it reviews 4.1, like the baby stuff we did yesterday. So one of the things we learned were about vectors. They look like a ray, so we name them similar to a ray. What does the symbol look like for a vector? A half, yeah, half of an arrow. So you draw like one of the arrowheads, but not the other. And then what letter in this picture, what letter would go first? S. S. And then T. S is the starting point, and then it goes towards T. So perfect. So that's the first part. The second part, and then it says name its component. A lot of people were getting confused about what a component was. It's just the name of... We don't call it a coordinate because it's not on the coordinate plane. Um, but what always goes in the first part of the parenthesis? Close. It's your horizontal. Correct. Your horizontal shift. And then in the second part will be... Um, the vertical shift. And the easy way to remember that is every coordinate point is an X and a Y, right? So X goes left to right, there's your horizontal, and then Y goes up and down, there's your vertical. So it's very similar to the property of a or, uh, an XY. So anyways, we're going to figure out the horizontal shift. Uh, we want to go from S to T. So from S to T, how much do I have to go to the left? Two boxes to the left, so two to the left, is that plus two or minus two? Minus two, and then we have to go down, how many? Four, so down four, is that plus four or minus four? Minus four. So that is writing the component, that's it. Um, in this next one, we're going to graph two different triangles. Um, Let's go ahead and graph DEF first. So 2, 5 to the right, 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Make sure you label D because you're going to graph a whole different picture here in a second. We have 6, 3 to the right, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We'll call it E. And then over 4, up to 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is F. You can connect the dots. I would still use that highlighter you were using yesterday, so you can decipher between the two. But that is my original. <clears throat> they gave us a vector, which we can add to each coordinate point to find the new one, or we could just count. If it says 5, and that's my horizontal shift, which direction will I go? To the right 5. That's what that means. And then it says negative 1, which would be down 1. So from every point, I'll start with D because that seems to be the easiest. It's at the top. So I will go to the right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then down one and plot a point and you call it D prime. We do the same thing with E. I think we do go off the graph for a second, do we? Yeah, yeah just for one of them. One, two, three, four. Just estimate where a fifth box would be. Five, oops, and then down one. So E prime. So again, I went 5 to the right, and then down 1. The same thing with F, 5 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then down 1. F prime. We good with this? Okay. The second, we're going to write a rule, or third, actually. Write a rule. A rule always starts with yeah, x, y, because <clears throat> um, it represents every point, and then it represents what happened to every point. So pick a letter M, N, or L. M. So we're going to compare the M's to each other. Um, which of these is the original? 
Is it the blue on my screen or the red? The blue. So we're going from the blue to the red. That's very important to note. So we want to figure out the horizontal shift first, and it is 1, 2, 3 to the right. So is that plus 3 or minus 3? Plus 3. <clears throat> and then we go up 1, right? Just up 1, yeah. So that would be plus 1 also. So that's the rule. You can flip to the next page and then just set it aside. We're going to go back to 4.1 and finish those notes first. So I believe we're on page 4. <clears throat> All right, page four, we good? Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and plot our points first. So this one is a quadrilateral. The only difference is it has four points instead of three. That's it. Everything else is the same. Um, but we're going to practice. We got one, negative two. So the right one, down two. So there's A. Over two, up one. B. Over four, up one, C. Over four, down two, D. Connect the dots. What shape is this? It is a trapezoid, yeah. Trapezoid. So a trapezoid is one pair of parallel sides. We learned that in chapter seven, but it is trapezoid. So we're going to move it using the translation. So this is a rule. You can always write it like a vector if you prefer looking at a vector. But either way, what direction does that minus 1 tell me? Left. So the first part's always horizontal. So it's going to be left 1. And then when it says y plus 4, I will go up 4. So left one, up four. So I'm going to start with A. To the left one, up one, two, three, four. There's A prime. To the left one, up one, two, three, four. B prime. To the left one, one, two, three, four. C prime to left one, up one, two, three, four, D prime. How do we feel about it? Good. All right. That's what it looks like printed. Um, for this one, I uh, the graph just does not have enough room. So I'm going to give you a graph. Do you notice how mine gives a lot of room in the second quadrant? When you get this graph, put your x-axis towards the bottom and your y-axis towards the side. I think you need some of it, but not all of it. Does that make sense? So you're going to get this paper. Go ahead and draw an x-axis similar, x and y, similar to what I have on the screen, or it just won't fit. So your x-axis towards the bottom of the page, your y-axis towards the right side of the page. Um, this is a segment, and you still move it the same way that you move a triangle, you move it the same way you move a quadrilateral. So we're going to go ahead and graph the original. So we got negative 8, 5. To the left, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 8, and then up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then label it R.
and then s is negative 6, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the left, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, s. Then connect the dots. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go from rs to rs prime, which is this one. We'll name r prime and s prime. And then we're going to base our next points off of the ones we had just done, not the original. So you're not going to go back to the original. So you then go from rs prime to rs double prime. So you go from the original points to this translation, and then from this translation to the new translation. Okay. So we'll start with rs prime first. Bless your heart. All right, so when it says minus 1 plus 4, minus 1 means which direction am I going to go? Okay. Left 1, and then plus 4 means I'm going to go up 4. So from each point, starting with, I'll do R first. So left 1, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4. That's R prime. To the left 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4. S prime. Or we came with the first one. We do the second one based off of the third one based off the second. So we're going to go from R prime and S prime to a new R double prime and an S double prime. So it says plus 4 and minus 6. So what does the plus 4 mean to me? To the right 4. And then the minus 6 means down 6. So I'm starting at R prime. Okay, so we use what we just found. To the right four and down six. So to the right one, two, three, four, and then down one, two, three, four, five, six. That is our double prime. Same thing from S. To the right four, one, two, three, four, right? Did we say the right? Yeah. And then down six. Three, four, five, six. So if you want to draw arrows, this is how it looks in your book. We went from what I have in red to green. So we went from RS to RS prime. And then we went from the green to the blue. Is everyone okay with the order? Okay. I think that's as complicated as that section gets. That's it. Now we're at 4.2. <clears throat> Reflections. Uh, my first hour did really, really well. So I have faith that you will as well. So we're on page two of Reflections, and you'll also want that four-quadrant graph to the right. We're going to do both of them at the same time. So we're first going to talk about a reflection, um, and then we'll do the other stuff with it. So a reflection is a transformation that uses a line like a mirror to reflect an image. It is a transformation that uses a line like a mirror to reflect an image. So we're using a line like a mirror. That line, does anybody know what it's called? You've heard about it before. We used it with parabolas. It's okay. It's called the line of reflection. Is it? So the line that you use as a mirror is called line of refle reflection. So you're going to need to be able to graph four different types of lines, uh, which is why you have four graphs to the right, like on your separate sheet of paper. So we're going to practice those four first. So go ahead and go over there. Um, these are four types of lines you will absolutely have to be able to graph. You've heard of them before. Um, we're just going to review them. This first one, bless you, is when y equals a number. Go ahead and label that above. y equals a number. I wouldn't label all of them all at once because I'm not going to wait. I'm just letting you know. So y equals a number. 
Let's go ahead and pick y equaling a number. Pick a number. Let's pick a positive number. 2. Okay. Where is 2 on the y-axis? It's here, correct? So when we say y equals 2, we only want this line to touch the y-axis. Or it would look like y equals mx plus b. And it doesn't. It looks like y equals a number. So what is this line going to look like if I only want it to touch the y-axis at 2? Horizontal. That's it. That's the answer. Go ahead and draw a dotted horizontal line through y equals 2. We can practice with a uh, negative number also. Pick a negative number. You were both close to each other. She's at six. Negative six. So that means it only touches the y-axis at negative six. So you would have a dotted line at negative six. Here's why it's dotted. Because in this section, we're doing a line of reflection. The line is not literally there. It's a dotted line because we're using that line to reflect things. It's not actually there, if that makes sense. We usually use dotted lines to represent things that aren't drawn there. Um, we're going to do x equals a number next. x equals a number. Let's go ahead and pick a positive first. 7. x equals 7. So that means I only want it to touch the x-axis because there's no y mentioned, right, in the name. So I only want it to touch the x-axis at 7. So what is this line going to look like? A vertical line. And then the same thing if it were negative. Let's say x was negative 3. Same idea. It would only touch the x-axis at negative 3. Are we okay with x and y? They look the opposite of what you think they should look, essentially. Um, this next one is called the identity function. You're going to hear about it a lot in Algebra 2. You probably, you definitely were told about it in Algebra 1. She just might not have said that it was called the identity function. And it means for every coordinate point, x and y are the same. So here's what that looks like. If x were 0 and y was the same, what does y have to equal? Zero. And one would be one, one, two, two, three, three. So here's what that looks like on the graph. And even to remind you, remember y equals mx plus b? What does m stand for? The slope, right? So what number is invisibly in front of x? One. And then plus b, what is b? The y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. So here's what happens with this one. That's why it looks just y equals x. Um, it's going to look like this. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. Everyone sees the pattern? Mm -hmm. The slope is up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1. The same way, the opposite way. If we have negative 1 for an x, that means y is negative 1. If negative 2 is x, y is negative 2. So on and so forth. Honestly, all these dots that you draw could probably just count as your dotted line because it's definitely dotted. But there's y equals x. The last is y equals negative x. So for every negative x, y is the opposite sign. So here's what that means. If x were negative 1, y would be positive 1. If x were negative 2, y would be positive 2. So, and in all honesty, it's just flipped of what we just did. Negative 1, positive 1 is here. Negative 2, positive 2 is here. Negative 3, positive 3 is here. And then the opposite would be true, too. If you had positive 1, the opposite of that is negative 1, which is down here. 
They're literally this just flipped of each other. Which makes sense because what is the slope in y equals negative x? Negative 1. So you go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, instead of up 1 over 1. That's it. All right, so we're on page 2 still, yes? Mm -hmm. I think yours is already graphed. I'm pretty sure mine is too. I just take a minute. So there's A, there's B, there's C. We all know how to graph and connect the dots by now. Yes, same idea. Um, but we're going to reflect across x equals negative 1. So we're going to draw a dotted line at x equals negative 1. So what is the only axis we want to touch? x-axis at negative 1. So go and draw your dotted line. And then from here, our dotted line is our mirror. So we're going to use it as a mirror. So this is up and down. So my triangle is going to be flipped over it. Okay. So let's look at A. How many boxes away is A on the right? Two. So guess how far it needs to be on the left? Two boxes. So on the same line, though, so keep that in mind. One, two. A will be directly, A prime, will be directly across from A the same amount of boxes away. Are we okay with A? From that line, yes. This is our reflection line. So each of them are two. To the right, to the left. B, how many boxes away is B from my line of, from my mirror here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So the same, the opposite direction, I have to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the same thing with C. From my mirror, how many boxes away is C? Three. three. So three to the left, one, two, three. How do we feel about it? Good. I think the main hard part of this section is just making sure you graph that line correctly. So we had x equals negative 1. The next one, so this is what it looks like zoomed in. The next one we got y equals 3. So again, it's already graphed on your paper. y equals 3, what is the only axis I want it to touch? y at 3. So this is going to be a horizontal line. So we can start with A. What do we notice about A? It's on the line of reflection. So where will A prime be? Yeah, on, yeah the same, it's the same. It's going to be the same point. So think about when you put your finger on a mirror, it's touching itself. You've, seen, you've put your finger on a mirror before? I hope so. OK, it's the same idea. Um, we could do C. So from the mirror, C is down to. So opposite of that would be up to. And then from the mirror, B is down 1. So we will go up 1. Prime. Connect the dots. It looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex head. I don't know. My son has like a toy. You know, like the ones you grip and then the mouth closes for you? That's what it looks like. Question about this. Okay. The last thing you'll be asked to do is reflect about the x-axis and the y-axis. Um, in this next section, I'm not, you're not going to graph because I didn't give you graph, but also just because. Um, so I'm going to show you. So to reflect about the x-axis, so go ahead and highlight x-axis. You're going to take the original point. X will stay the same, but Y will be the opposite sign. So go and fill in X, negative Y. And that negative means the opposite sign. So I'll show you what that means. Uh, 
Um, if I had, we'll say, 3, negative 4 as A. A prime, if I were trying to reflect it about the x-axis, x would stay the same, and then y would be the opposite sign. So opposite of negative 4 would be positive 4. So that's all this is saying. Um, this is a little bit of a memorization section. If you had to guess about the second one, so we've talked about the x-axis, the y-axis, what do you think we do for the y-axis? We do what? Correct. We flip the x sign, so the opposite of the x, and then the same y. So negative x comma y. And then these two, even though I showed you, how to graph them. Because these x and y axis are technically already graphed for you, right? Like every time you draw a coordinate plane. Um, I showed you how to graph these two, but sometimes when it's a weird looking picture or a segment, it's difficult to just count the boxes a little bit. Um, so here's what you do for y equals x. You flip the x and the y. So whatever your original was, if it was 2, 4, to reflect about the y equals x, it would be 4, 2. You would just flip the two numbers. And then to go about the y equals negative x, you flip them and you do the opposite sign. So it would be negative y, negative x. And we shall use them below. So each of these are different questions using the same points. Okay, so every time we're going to go back to these three original points. So starting with the x-axis, reflecting about the x, the x stays the same, the y will negate. So what will j prime be if we're using the points above? 1, negative 3. And k prime? 4, negative 4, and then L prime, 3, negative 1. To reflect about the y-axis, we negate, or we do the opposite of the x, and we keep the y. So again, we're going to go back to the beginning. We're just using these three points every time. So what would J prime be if J was 1, 3? negative 1, 3, and k prime, negative 4, 4, and then l prime, negative 3, 1. To reflect about y equals x, we reverse them, we do yx, which honestly, if you look at it, that's going to be easy for you to memorize, because if y equals x, you can just y, x. I hope you see it. I see it. Uh, but j prime, if j was 1, 3, j prime would be 3, 1. And then k prime, yeah, it'd be 4, 4. And then l prime, 1, 3. And then the last, we flip them and do the opposite sign. So negative y, negative x. So j prime would be? Negative what? Negative Correct. Negative 3, negative 1. And then k prime? Yeah, negative 4, negative 4. So flipped. So negative 4, negative 4. And then L prime, so flipped and opposite sign would be negative one, negative three.